The urge to do better is one of our deepest human instincts. If we work hard, we want to get ahead. We want a good home, we want to live in a safe community. And most of all, we want to have our kids to get the life at least as good as we've had. It's the same for countries as it is for individuals. If our country is to progress, the next generation has to enjoy at least the same standard of living we do, but preferably a better one. And this comes down to productivity, the economist's term for the amount of output you get for every unit of input. In the real world, productivity improves when a factory gets, say, better machines, when workers upgrade their skills, and when government imposes fewer hobbles on business. Just think how much more productive Australia's farmers are now that they've got tractors as well as horses, chemical fertilisers as well as manure, and wire fences rather than ones out of timber and stone. The problem, though, is that our national productivity growth is stalling. Over the past decade, our national productivity, that's the amount we produce given the amount we put in, grew by just 1% a year. Now, that's the worst result in 60 years and just half the annual productivity growth we had in the 1990s, which was a decade of sustained economic reform. The Productivity Commission reckons that if Australia had kept up our 60-year average in terms of productivity growth, so not fallen behind in the past decade, our national income per person would now be almost $5,000 a year higher. Ahead of a major report to be released tomorrow, the Treasurer says that if we stay on this current low growth trajectory, he says, and I quote, future incomes will be 40% lower than otherwise and the working week will need to be 5% longer. In other words, with that more efficient operation of the economy, we'll do more and get less, we'll work harder and earn less. According to the Productivity Commission, in order to improve productivity growth, what's needed are workers who are more skilled, markets that are more competitive, technologies that are better used, and government that's more efficient. Plus, they say, reaching net zero at the lowest possible cost. But does anyone think that's likely to be the agenda of the current government? Well, the Albanese government certainly agrees with the Commission that our national productivity needs to improve. This government wants more union power and influence, not less, more government direction of markets and more renewable energy, regardless of its impact on the security of our power supply. Is it any wonder that one of the Albanese government's innumerable reviews is into the Productivity Commission itself, a body that sees better markets rather than big government as the answer to our problems? Excuse me. <clears throat> our current prosperity, albeit less than it might have been, is a product of the reforms undertaken by the Hawke and Howard governments. But instead of reforming the economy, this government's more likely to reform the Productivity Commission in what could easily become a bad case of shooting the messenger just when we need to hear honest truth more than ever.